Hi, I am Dr. Sakhir Bansur, and today I will discuss with you epiphysis and the types of the epiphysis. So let's recapitulate the long bone structure, right? This is femur, right? And this is the upper end, the lower end, and the shaft, upper end. And if you look at that, this part is the epiphysis. Here you could see this. And this is the metaphysis, right? And this is the diaphysis of the shaft. This whole thing, follow the laser. And this, at, for the lower end, this is the metaphysis, the junction of the diaphysis and the epiphysis. And this, for the lower end, this is the epiphysis. This is the outer shell in the shaft, is the compact bone. And the cavity is the medullary cavity for the bone marrow. I've told you already discussed with you the long bone structure. And the pressure epiphysis, first of all, and then the traction epiphysis, the aber aberrant epiphysis, and the atavistic epiphysis are the main types. And what is the definition of an epiphysis? Epiphysis is any part of a bone that is constituted from a secondary center of ossification. In case of a developing bone, epiphysis are separated from main body of the bone by a layer of cartilage, but unite with main bone mass when ossification of the bone gets complete. So various, various types of the epiphysis, usually there are five types. Number one is the pressure epiphysis. Number two is the traction epiphysis. Number three is the atavistic epiphysis. Number four is the aberrant epiphysis. And number five is the composite epiphysis and I will discuss with you these one by one. You could see as well this is the pressure epiphysis the head of the femur and these are the trochanter greater than less trochanters of the femur the traction epiphysis the coracoid process is an atavistic epiphysis and the aberrant epiphysis of the first metacarpal head and uh, one by one discussion, first of all, is the pressure epiphysis, right? These epiphysis, you could see this. This is the head of the femur. This is this is meant for articulation, head of the femur. So pressure epiphysis located at those bone ends that are either involved in transmitting weight or human body or at those bone regions that bear pressure during movement of or locomotion. This pressure epiphysis are constantly articular and participate in formation of the joints. Classic example, I've told you already, the head of the femur and the other example is the head of the humerus. And uh, traction epiphysis. Traction epiphysis are non-articular. They do not form joints. And they, right? so the chief function of the traction epiphysis is to deliver attachment for tendons and ligaments. This epiphysis ossify later than the pressure epiphysis. The examples I told you already, it's greater to enter and the lesser to enter the femur and uh, the greater and lesser tubercle of the humerus also. What is the atavistic epiphysis, right? You could see they've given you two examples. And atavistic epiphysis denote those bones that were phylogenetically independent, for instance, in four-legged animals, but then have gotten fused with other bones in humans. A classic example of this epiphysis is coracoid process of the scapula. This is the scapula bone, follow the laser, this is the coracoid process. It was independent bone uh, phylogenetically and now it has fused with the uh, scapula. No more an independent bone, right? It's part of the scapula. Another example is the posterior tubercle of the talus, the os trigonum. Here you could see this, right? This is the talus. Then the aberrant epiphysis. As its name denotes, these epiphyses are deviations from usual and do not exist all the time, right? Examples, the presence of aberrant epiphysis in the head of the first metacarpal. This is the first metacarpal, follow the laser, and this is the aberrant epiphysis of the first metacarpal head. And uh, it is to be kept in mind that normally metacarpal bodies of the hand possess only one secondary center of ossification. Another one secondary center exists in the base of the first metacarpal and one each in heads of all other metacarpals. So the continuation of the aberrant epiphysis, 
on numerous occasions an aberrant epiphysis exists to be present in distal end the head of the first metacarpal and at times one or more of the other metacarpals have aberrant epiphysis in their bases now next composite epiphysis it is a combination of the separate centers which unite to constitute an epiphysis of a bone separate centers develop in a bone during period of childhood these centers unite to constitute a compound epiphysis. The epiphysis gets fused with shaft of the bone when the bone stops growing in length. And the example of the proximal femoral and humeral head epiphysis looks similar, but the femoral head epiphysis is larger than the humeral epiphysis in early childhood. And in the last, we'll discuss pseudo-epiphysis. So let's see what is that. In children, a pseudo-epiphysis of the first metatarsal usually occurs. Here you could see this. This is the pseudo-epiphysis. Here you could see. Let's discuss what is that. This pseudo-epiphysis is epiphysis looking and epiphysis looking end of the bone, while an epiphysis is not commonly present. It looks like to be an epiphysis, but in fact, it's not. He, I told you already, here you could see this. This is a nosh like process. And I tell you, if you like my channel and um, enjoy watching, please do subscribe and share. A pseudo epiphysis is delineated by a transverse notch that uh, looks similar to the growth plate. Let's finally again, you see that this is the pseudo epiphysis notch. Uh, however, these transverse notches never show typical cell columns that are present in normal growth plates and never contribute considerably to the longitudinal bone growth. Example, these epiphyses are present at distal end of first metacarpal bone in 80% of the normal population and at proximal end of the second metacarpal in 60%. This is, you could see, this is the foot. This is the first metatarsal that in, it is present here. This is the studio epiphysis. Thank you very much. Stay tuned for more general anatomy this time and uh, have a great time. Good day. Thank you very much.